Hello everyone. I'm glad to see you on my channel. The story I'm going to tell you today is pure. It is true that all the bad things that happen in life happen for a reason. It is said that we can appreciate the good things, the things when they happen to us. I hope you enjoy this story. I wish you a pleasant viewing experience. Sophia was born in a small town. The child grew up very happy. She had a mom, dad, two grandmothers, two grandfathers, and other relatives on each side. The girl from childhood never knew any refusals. What she wanted was bought for her. Mommy, I want a Barbie doll, said the girl at home. Here, daddy will go on a business trip and will definitely buy it for you, the woman promised her. Okay, I will wait, was not very capricious Sophia. She spent a lot of time at her grandmother's house. She liked to go with her to the dacha to help there. Come on, sit down, we will learn to read, like to tell her grandmother. At the age of five, her granddaughter already knew the whole alphabet, all the letters, and could read. No one doubted that the girl would grow up to be a wonderful person. Well, ready for school? Asked her mother, when August began, and the 1st of September it was necessary to go to the line. Of course, look here is my briefcase, notebooks, pens, pencils, pencils, eraser, ruler, listed Sophia and laid it all out on the table. Come on, come on, put everything away, or we'll forget something, her mother told her. Today the girl was dressed up, beautiful uniform, white apron, white bows. Mom, dad, grandparents all went with Sophia today. The girl was happy, now she stood smiling with her whole mouth, and her relatives were ready to support her in everything. So how was the first day of school? Her mom asked her when Sophia came back from there. Boring, she told her. How is it boring? They don't tell you anything. Cindy asked her. We are learning letters and I already know everything. When I ask the teacher to read something to her, she threatens me with her finger and tells me to sit quietly and listen carefully, from Sophia in the kitchen. Well, my dear, who's to blame that you learned everything so quickly, stroked her on the head, mom. Will it be the same from now on? Sophia asked her. The same, not the same, but you have to learn, answered her mother. Sophia tried, she liked it when she brought home A's, then everyone rejoiced, and with this diary, the girl went on to her grandmother's. They also rejoiced and praised the girl. Since she was an only child, everyone spoiled her. Dad, buy me a fur coat, said his daughter when she was in the fourth grade. Oh wow, even mom does not ask for a fur coat, he laughed. And so it was always in the family, if there was a holiday, they all gathered at one big table. Mom cooked, Sophia helped her, she set the table, brought some utensils, cut bread, and in the evening everyone else would come, sit down at the table, and the fun would begin. No one shared the fact that there were little ones or adults sitting there, everyone talked on the same level. But when Sophia was 12 years old, she came home from school and saw her mother sitting in the kitchen crying. Mommy, what's wrong? She ran up to her without even taking her shoes off. Nothing, little girl, go. The woman didn't want to tell her. But Sophia couldn't leave her mother in such a state. She went to the corridor, took off her shoes. After that she changed her clothes in the room and came to the kitchen again. Mom, I can see that something happened. She sat down next to the woman on a chair. As hard as it is for me to say this, your father left us, she said. How he left, where he went. Sophia didn't understand. I do not know, in a neighboring city, where he constantly went on business trips, he met some woman and now admitted it. He said he was going to her, the woman said, tears rolling down her cheeks and she was sobbing. Yes, no, I don't believe that our daddy could do such a thing. The girl also cried. Now together with her mother, it was so hard for them that neither one nor the other could not express it in words, but it had to be endured. And so they went on with their lives, supporting each other. Grandmother, mom's mother, came every day to support the girls. The other grandmother called, inviting Sophia to visit, but she could not go to her. Yes, the woman was not guilty of anything, but Sophia could not forgive her because of her father. It had been a year since her father and mother had divorced, and it had gotten a little easier. It's just that they were used to living together. Mommy, please don't cry ever again, her daughter sat up to her. Thank you, honey, you're my only support, Cindy hugged her. Now the holidays were not so merry because there were only four people at the table, grandparents, mom, and Sophia herself. Why don't we get a kitten? She once said, you know we could do without a kitten, 
her mom leaned over and kissed her, because with her father gone, there wasn't enough money for anything. Cindy worked, but her small paycheck was just enough to pay the utilities, leave Sophia for lunches, and buy the most basic groceries. Sophia knew this, so she never asked for anything extra. If everyone started having cell phones, Sophia didn't ask her mom for anything. Let's go at least buy a simple one, she suggested to her. No, why do I need it? Before as it used to get by. Now I will go to school, spending will be less then, and then we'll see, she told her mother in all seriousness. Now the girl was already in the 10th grade, she had one more year to go, and she might fulfill her dream. Sophia wanted to enter the financial academy, because she thought that after graduation, she would definitely find a good job, and she would earn money and help her mother. Also, after her father left, Sophia had an obsession. She thought she would meet a nice young man, and he would have everything he needed to support first a girl and then a wife. When summer came, Sophia persuaded her mother to go to the village. She had a friend living there. They had a big vegetable garden and they could plant something. It was good in the village, so the whole family that stayed with Sophia, mom, grandma, grandpa, stayed there until the end of the summer. Potatoes, carrots, beets, various greens and other vegetables were planted. The owners had their own capital house and Sophia and her family settled in a small house that stood on the plot. There was no water or other amenities, but there was sunshine and fresh air. They enjoyed it. In August, the family returned from the village to prepare for the school year. Sophia had never been negligent in her studies, so she had read everything that had been assigned for the summer and was now ready to start with renewed vigor. She was also serious about enrollment because she knew that knowledge is power. When she entered the first year, she had to make sure that the teacher saw you remembered you and that she could relax. But now it was too early to talk about it because there was a whole year of school ahead and then exams. You should go for a walk, you're sitting at home, her mother told her. Oh mom, what are you talking about? I would have to deal with all this. She pointed at the notebooks and textbooks. Yes, it seems to me, you know so much already that enough for any person. The mother was not worried about her daughter because she realized that if she wants, she will do everything. And so the 11th grade came to an end. All the exams were behind now. It remained only to find out the results and receive a certificate. Sophia didn't want to go to the graduation, but her mom talked her into it. So today she sat in front of the mirror, looked at herself and combed her hair. Sophia and Cindy's life was more or less going well. Money was tight now too, but they were trying to save money. And in August, another big blow came. In the morning, Cindy got up as usual. Mom, are you going somewhere? Sophia saw the woman wash up and get dressed. I don't know what's going on, but for some reason this morning it just pricked me right up that I need to go see my mom, the woman said. Do you want me to come with you? Sophia offered to go with her. Well, if it's not too much trouble, let's go, mom didn't mind. They walked out of the apartment together. Not even 10 minutes later, they were already outside grandma's house. They went up to the floor, and when they entered the apartment, Cindy shrieked. Grandma was lying on the floor, mooing and pointing at the wall. They got her up and put her on the bed and mom started calling an ambulance. Grandpa was at work at that moment, he was supposed to come only for lunch. The ambulance arrived quickly. The medics examined the woman, gave her an injection, and said that if it got worse, to call them again, and the grandmother would be taken to the hospital. When the grandfather came back, he could not believe what happened. Just yesterday the woman was healthy and feeling well, and today this happened. Mommy, how are you? Cindy sat down beside her, but she just looked at her with big eyes, tears streaming from them, and by evening, Grandma was gone. It was a very hard blow not only for her daughter and granddaughter, but also for Grandpa. He suffered this loss the hardest of all. Three days later, when the funeral was held, it was as if Grandpa had aged many years. Cindy was afraid to leave him alone, so they drove home together. Daddy, stay with us, she told him that evening, but he wouldn't go. I said I'm going home. That's all he kept saying. And the next morning, when Cindy got a call from her father's work saying he hadn't shown up, she got ready and went to his place. She entered the apartment. The man was lying on the couch. Daddy. She walked over to him and cried. She saw that he was alive, that his eyes were open. But he didn't move, didn't react to anything. Should I call a doctor? She bent over him. He just looked at her, closed his eyes and that was it 
and he didn't open them again. The woman just sat on the floor and howled like a wounded animal. Sophia came in later. When she saw her mother, she immediately understood everything. It turns out that the husband and wife died almost on the same day. Their love was so strong that they couldn't live without each other even after death. That's it, it's just you and me now, Cindy hugged her daughter. Mommy, don't worry, everything will be fine, Cindy told her. I know that, the woman shook her head. Now Sophia had to enroll, to go to the dormitory to move in. I don't want to leave you here alone, she told her mother. Everything will be all right, don't worry, she kissed her, and Sophia left. Now she was checking into the dormitory, and the next day was her first day at the academy. Almost all the rooms were for two people, and Sophia had a new acquaintance. Hi, I'm Sophia, she walked into the room. And I'm Naudi, the girl who was already there answered her. They talked a little, learned from each other, who does what, and by the evening they were sitting and laughing, as if they knew each other for a long time. Shall we go? Naomi asked Sophia. Sure, let's go. Together they went to the school. Today they were introduced to the teachers, told what subjects they would have, showed the classrooms, that is, it was a day of familiarization, and when they returned to the dormitory, other girls who were also in their group came to meet them. Should we go out and celebrate our acquaintance? Julia, who lived across the hall, asked. No, let's at least wait until the weekend, said Sophia, who wanted to study, not go out to bars. Well, fine, whatever you want, Julia said then. Naomi still stayed with the girls, and Sophia went to her room. On the weekend they didn't go home, because it wasn't profitable for them to go every time, and as agreed, the girls got together and went to a cafe. They wanted to eat ice cream and something else, and when they went back to the dormitory, some young men followed them. Hey girls, they caught up with them. Hi, Julia turned around, she was the most active. How are you doing? Where are you going? The guys asked them. Halt, we recently entered the academy. We live in a dormitory. Julia continued to talk to them. I see they followed them. Sophia walked in silence the whole way. She did not want to enter into any dialogue because now she had something else on her mind. And when everyone came to the porch of the dormitory and began to enter, one of the young men came to Sophia and took her hand. Wait, can I talk to you? He asked her. What did you want? She turned around. Come on, let's move away, the guy asked her. They moved some distance away from everyone else. Sophia stood and watched. Well, what did you want to ask? She said to him again. I wanted to meet you. Because of all the girls, you are the one I liked, he said. My name is Sophia, she began shyly. I'm Steve. Why don't we go for a walk? He looked at his watch, realizing that girls have a certain time when the dorm closes. I don't know. Sophia looked at her girlfriends, maybe tomorrow. Okay then, I'll pick you up tomorrow. He winked at her and he and the guys walked back. So did they say you met a guy? Her roommate asked her when Sophia entered the room. It seemed that yes, she was changing her clothes. And what did you two agree on? Naomi wondered. That he would come by tomorrow to pick me up. Her girlfriend didn't keep it from her. Since the next day was a day off, Sophia could freely walk with Steve. They walked around the city talking. He told different things that he was independent. Everything worked out for him. Sophia listened to him, and even as it was not believed that all this was happening to her. That, just like that, once went out for a walk and immediately met a normal young man. From that day on, she began to combine school and love. She and Steve, they just hit it off really quickly. So when she went home for the holidays, she invited the young man along. And your mom will not mind if I come, he asked Sophia. No, we've always been together. Her father left us a long time ago. So now we are like two friends, she told him. Well, that's great, he smiled. Maybe we should go to the station, find out when the bus will leave and maybe buy tickets. Sophia was worried. Come on, I have a car, let's take it. Steve told her. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Sophia was pleasantly surprised. Now she thought that all her dreams were starting to come true. She wanted to find herself a wealthy young man. And now she was going to meet him. They went to her mom's house. Sophia didn't realize there could be anything wrong. The young people stopped by the store, bought a cake, flowers, and headed to the right address. But as soon as they entered the apartment, the woman was immediately, somehow wary of the young man. Sophia, can I talk to you for a minute? Cindy called her into the kitchen. Her daughter came to her there, saw her mother slicing bread, looked at her wondering why she would call her here. 
Did you want to ask her something? She guessed. Safia, I don't like your boyfriend, her mother began to say without any introduction. And what exactly do you dislike about him? The girl did not want it, but she took it in stride. No, I'm not saying anything, maybe he's good, but first of all, he's an adult, older than you, and secondly, it's unclear what he does. Her mother wanted to warn her that it might turn out the same way as she did. Mom, Steve's a good guy, the amount of time we've been out with him, he's never once said a bad word to me. Not once have I thought anything bad about him, the girl started to stick up for him. I don't know it's up to you, but it's my job to warn you. Cindy put the bread in a plate and carried it into the room to the table. They sat at the table. There was an awkward silence. When they arrived, his mother had asked Steve what he did, where he worked, but he had been vague. And now they sat there, looking at each other, not knowing what to say to each other. Okay, mom, we'll go for a walk. I'll show Steve the city and you're here at home, clean everything, prepare. From the outside, it could seem that the girl commands her mother. When they went outside, Steve also told the girl that he thought her mother didn't like him. What are you both starring? She didn't understand. No, I'm not starting anything. It's just that I have eyes and I can see the way she looked at me, Steve told her. She was looking at you all right. Sophia was starting to lose her temper. Tell me, isn't that why she called you into the kitchen to talk about me? He asked her. That's enough, it's my decision. It's me who will live with you, not her, the girl told him, and she didn't want to talk about it anymore. They went for a walk, and when it was late, they returned home. The mother decided to change her anger into mercy because she realized that she could fight with her daughter. Now she wanted to show that she didn't mind the young people socializing at all. They stayed in the city where Safia was born and lived one more day and then packed up and drove back. Safia continued to live in the dormitory. Steve came to visit her. Everything was fine because that's what she wanted. The girl did not abandon her studies. She met with the guys sometimes but not every day because there were various tests to prepare for. We see each other so rarely, Steve told her. Well, it's okay. Now the vacation will come and there we will be together all the time. The girl hugged him. When Safia was in the dormitory, Naomi kept pestering her about what they were doing with Steve, how and what they were planning in the future. Oh wait, I don't know anything yet. Now we will pass exams. Then we are going to go to the city where my mom lives for the whole summer, Safia told her. And then what will be decided? Naomi didn't understand. Well, we'll live together and see if we're right for each other or not, shrugged her shoulders because she didn't want to talk about it. Wow, you've been dating for almost a year and only now you want to see if you're right for each other or not. Nami laughed at her. Sophia didn't respond because she had seen how possessive Steve was lately. Yes, she was fine with everything about him. He bought her gifts, drove her around in his car. She knew he had money, but she didn't understand where he was, what he did for a living. When the vacations came, they came to visit her mother again. Mom will probably live in Grandma's apartment for the summer, Sophia told her. Okay. I don't mind at all, the mother realized that she would not change her daughter's choice. The summer passed unnoticed. All the time young people rested, went to the river. Steve sometimes went away. When he was not there, then Sophia went to her mother. In September, the girl again went to study. Steve naturally was here next to her. You're sitting at home, I'm fine, he replied. Sophia cried. She went to her mother and complained about her husband. And I warned you, said to her at these moments women. But what should I do? The girl was in tears. Pack your things, take your son, move in with me, and then he will leave, her mother told her. That same evening, Sophia decided to talk to her husband. What? I won't let you go anywhere. He told her. And who will ask you? She was packing everything she needed for herself and the baby. Yeah, where would you be if it wasn't for me? He started to tell her in a drunken voice. Steve, please stop it. She didn't want to hear the accusations against her because she knew it wasn't her fault. Did I stop it? You stopped everything. The money was gone. You became unnecessary. He was telling her rudely. How can you not understand? I need you. And if it wasn't for your insults, name calling, everything else, we would be fine. What does your money have to do with it? You can always earn it. She tried to talk to him calmly. There's always money to be made. Well, go out and earn something. I've never seen you rush to get a job. He was getting more and more upset. I've got a little kid who's gonna take care of him. You? She raised her eyes at him, 
I'm going to my mom with my son. You, if you want, you can come, but not in this condition. She went into the room, took the baby, and they left the apartment. Of course, the mother was happy to see them, even though she realized that she had warned her daughter, but now she was ready to protect her by taking her in. Steve had been walking for a long time, each time he was inebriated, so Safi didn't hesitate to file for divorce. Know that I will not give you to anyone. He shouted to her under the windows of her mom's apartment. That's it. Stop putting up with this. Take away his keys and let him go. Her mom told her. It was painful, but the girl had to do as her mother said. Now the girl lived with her mother. It was very difficult. The salary was nothing. The allowance was also tiny. They both didn't know what to do. Mom, maybe you'll quit your job and stay home with Barry and I'll go to work. Safi asked her once. Well, try to get a job. You don't have any education. You haven't graduated yet. Mom shrugged. Sophia started looking for a job. She was taken as a cashier at the factory, but there she would receive exactly the same as her mother. So they decided not to change anything for the time being. As long as she got child support and her mom got a paycheck, they decided that would be enough. When Barry had to go to kindergarten, Sophia decided to go to work. And today, after another refusal, she went to the cafe to have coffee. Sophia. She heard someone calling her. Turned around, saw her high school friend Leslie. Hey, what are you doing here? She came up to her. Yes, I came to visit relatives, smiled the girl. And you now, what, where, how? Sophia was very interested because they had not seen each other for so long. I'm doing well, I got married. I live in a big city, shared with her friend. I see, Sophia sadly lowered her head. Well, what about you? Tell me how many years we have not seen each other. Leslie looked at Sophia is sitting, and in front of her there is only one coffee. Well, I'm doing the usual. Met a guy, my mom warned me, but I didn't listen to her. Got married, got pregnant, had a son. But my husband was a wuss. As soon as he started having problems, he started drinking, blaming me for everything. Eventually, I moved in with my mom, got divorced. Now I'm looking for a job. But without experience, with unfinished education, and with a small child, they don't take me anywhere. A girl was sitting. She was looking at her mug and quietly told me. Yes, life can be frustrating, Leslie said. I don't know what to do, Sophia shrugged. You know what, if your mom agrees to stay here with your son, I could take you with me. My husband will definitely help you with a job. And the first time you'll live with us. And then you'll get your own place, Leslie said cheerfully. It's embarrassing, Sophia looked up at her. It's okay, here's my phone number. Talk to your mother today, and if she's okay with it, We'll be out of here in a week, Leslie said in all seriousness. Shit, friend, if everything works out, I'll be so grateful to you, Sophia smiled at her. They sat for a while longer today, then said their goodbyes. The girl came home in the evening, together with her mother they had dinner, fed Barry, bathed him, put him to bed, and went to the kitchen. Cindy sat down across from her daughter and folded her hands in front of her. How do you know? The girl was surprised. I can see that you want to say something but you can't stand it. Mom stood up and poured hot tea into mugs. Listen, today in the cafe, began to tell Sophia. In a cafe? Her mother interrogated her, not letting her finish. We are living from cent to cent, and you go the calves. Listen, I was so bad after the next interview that I decided to come in just to have a cup of coffee. I didn't want to explain it to Sophia, but I had to. So what happened next? The woman sighed. That's where I met Leslie, remember? Looked the daughter and her mother. Well, let's say, not in Nadejda. So, Tanket is well settled and invites me to live with her. Her husband, some director, will help me to get a job, Sophia said quickly. Yes, why are you so worried? Everything will be fine. Again, as in childhood, her mother came to her and hugged her. Well, you realize that I'll have to leave Barry here, Sophia said sadly, because it was hard for her. It's okay, honey, of course you will. If you can make it there, I'll be happy for you. Cindy was always for her daughter. Just as Leslie had promised, a week passed and together with Sophia, they drove to where a friend lived with her husband. It wasn't the closest place, but Sophia hoped for the best. Victor were home. They entered the apartment. It was a large three-room apartment. Now Sophia understood what her friend was talking about when it came to living space. Well, friend gets settled. She led her into a small room. And when Sophia threw her suitcase, they all went to the kitchen together. Victor was already waiting for them there. Of course, Leslie had warned him that she was coming not alone, 
but with a friend, and he did his best to prepare dinner for them. Here, Victor, meet my friend Sophia, Leslie said. Very nice to meet you, he answered her. Now the girl was uncomfortable that she came to strangers to someone else's house. But when Victor sat down at the table, and they began to eat, then during the conversation Sophia realized that this is a wonderful man. He is as benevolent as she was, and she stopped worrying. The very next day Sophia went to his office together with Victor. She provided all the documents that were needed, and now she was accepted in the accounting department, for now, as a simple specialist. Victor, thank you very much, she said to the man at home in the evening. If I had a place, why don't I give it to you? If I didn't have one, then it would be a bigger problem, he said to her. Now Victor and Leslie were in their room in the evening, Sophia and hers, all minding their own business. But often, when Victor was late for work, Leslie and Sophia could sit in the kitchen for hours and tell each other what they had. Why don't we order rolls? Leslie suggested to her friend. And what, and you can go and buy a bottle of white dry? Squinted Sophia. Okay, then I order rolls, and you go to the store. Smiled Leslie because she realized that she did not want to go anywhere out of the house. I agree. She quickly got dressed and walked out of the girl's apartment. When she came back, nothing had been brought in yet. Wow, how long this courier, she was surprised. Yes, it happens. Either there are a lot of orders or they are so slow, Leslie took the package from her and took it to the kitchen. They set something on the table, opened a bottle, and sat down. An hour, an hour and a half passed, but their order never arrived. So I'll call the operator. Leslie picked up the phone and started calling. She talked about something. At the end, she asked for the courier's number and gestured for Sophia to write down the number. Sophia opened the dialer and wrote down all the numbers her friend had dictated to her. What did you say his name was? Sam, I see, thank you. She looked at Sophia to make sure she had recorded it. When they dialed, they were answered by a young man. He said he was caught in traffic but was on his way to them. The rolls were delivered and the friends continued their buffet. When it was late and Victor showed up at the house, Sophia apologized to them and retired to her room. She didn't want to interfere with the family idol, so she tried to stay out of the way when Victor was home. The next day was her day off. She got up, brewed some coffee, and sipped it. When Leslie came in smelling it, she made her an invigorating drink as well. Afterward, the friends sat in the kitchen, talking about something. Do you want to take a little walk today, for example, to the park? Suggested Sophia to her friend. You know, I don't like it very much, so I prefer to stay at home, refused Leslie. Sophia didn't want to stay at home. She wanted to see the city, what, where and how, so she went alone. She took a short walk, then came to the park, sat on a bench, and just sat and looked at how beautiful everything was here. Then Sophia decided to dial her friend's number to ask her what else there was to see. She dialed the number, sat there, and listened to the long beeps. Hello. A pleasant male voice sounded in the receiver. Hello, hello, sorry, I, probably, wrong number. Sophia realized that it wasn't Leslie or Victor. She dropped the call, sitting up, her cheeks flaming. She didn't understand how she could have dialed a different number if she was calling a friend. At that moment, the phone rang again. She picked it up and saw Sam's name on the screen. At first she didn't understand and wanted to reset it, but then she thought that maybe they hadn't given the courier enough money yesterday, or maybe he just mixed up the numbers and was calling her now, because she'd written down yesterday's courier as Sam. Hello, she answered coyly. Hello, you just called me, the young man told her. I, to you? Wondered Sophia. Yes, you just dialed me and then apologized and hung up, the young man told her. The girl stopped understanding anything at all. She picked up the phone brought it to her eyes and saw that she had dialed Sam's number instead of Leslie's. Oh, Sam, please excuse me. I just got the numbers mixed up. My friend's name is Leslie, and I thought I had already spoken to her today. I pressed the last call and it was your phone. She started making excuses. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, he laughed. Did you realize who I was? Now Sophia was curious. No, I thought you were really mistaken. You were surprised by her question. It was us who called you yesterday, you were delivering rolls to us, laughed the girl. Now she realized that it was very easy for her to communicate with this man. And what is your name? Sam asked a question. Sophia, she did not hide anything. It's a beautiful name, she could hear him coming somewhere. 
I guess I'm distracting you from your work, she realized, remembering that he was a courier and could be delivering an order to someone right now. There is a little, but I can talk while I walk, he answered her. Okay, again, I apologize for distracting you, the girl said. It's okay, I'm even a little pleased, maybe we can arrange a meeting with you, he asked her. I don't know, even though he didn't see her, Sophia shrugged her shoulders. Then I'll take the liberty and call you for a walk in the evening, he spoke calmly. Sophia looked at her watch, it was almost four o'clock now. And in the evening, what time was that? She wanted to know the details. My working day ends at six, then I am completely free, the young man told her. Okay, I'll wait for you in the park, she agreed with him. Sophia dialed her friend's number. Hey, where have you been? Leslie asked her. You know what just happened to me, you wouldn't believe it, smiled Sophia. And what was it that happened? Leslie was curious to know. I wanted to call you, to ask you what interesting things to see in this city, and a young man picked up the phone. And, do you know who it was? She was silent, waiting for her friend to guess. Well, who was it? Don't keep me in suspense. She was very curious. Yesterday's courier Sam, Sophia told her. Wow, how did that happen? My friend was surprised. Here, I wanted to call Leslie, but called Sam. Sophia laughed again. Well, friend, you're crazy. And what, you had a conversation? Leslie's questions, it seemed, did not end. Yes, he himself called me back, and we agreed to meet, said the girl what they talked about on the phone. And what, are you going to wait for him all this time? Leslie continued to ask. Here and I do not know, maybe come home to change. As if asking for advice, Sophia. It's whatever you want, her friend didn't give her any advice. Sophia decided to go home and get change, in case it got cooler in the evening. When she entered the apartment, she saw her friend smiling. Do you think it's funny? Sophia came out of her room when she had already changed. No, it's not funny, it's just that sometimes accidents are happy, Leslie said. They went to the kitchen together, had time to drink tea and chat. Well, I'll run with Sophia in the corridor. The keys to the apartment took. Carefully asked the hostess. Yes, they are in my purse, Sophia nodded affirmatively. After that she went outside. The girl herself did not know why she was in such a playful mood. She wanted to meet this young man, to talk, to walk around the city. She shook her head to get rid of the ridiculous thoughts that were going through her head, and there came all sorts of things, but Sophia forced herself not to think about it, because she was afraid it wouldn't be quite the same. She came to the same park where she had been during the day, sat on a bench, and waited. The time was half past seven when Sam dialed her. Hello, she answered him. So, I'm in the park, where are you? He asked her. Follow the Cinder Avenue, you can't go wrong, she told him, and looked towards the entrance. A few minutes later, the young man and the girl met. They smiled at each other. They already knew each other from the phone, so now Sophia stood up. Hi. She was shy, her cheeks burning as she spoke, and also suddenly she began to stutter. What's wrong with you? He turned to her. I don't know myself, she told him honestly. Relaxed, it's okay. I'm just an ordinary guy who just wants to chat with a pretty girl, he smiled at her. Sophia felt better after that. They walked along the alley. The young man told her different stories. Well, why are you silent? He wanted to get the girl to talk. I don't know, I have a story, but I don't think it's worth telling today, she told him. What kind of story? He really liked this girl, and now he wanted to know everything about her. About my past life, she stopped talking. Well, what was there in your past life? He was being funny, he wanted to keep it positive. Okay, they say sometimes that you can tell a stranger all your problems and they will disappear, she sighed. Do you have problems? He took her hand. I won't say they are problems, but the story is not a good one. She started telling him about her first marriage, how it was at first, how it became afterwards, that they had a son. So you have a son? He asked. Why, is that so important to you? She looked at him, and immediately remembered that not all men like it when a woman already has a child. In what way are you asking? He looked at her. Directly, she didn't know what to say next. Sophia, don't worry, everything is fine. If you mean the relationship between us and whether your son will interfere with us, then I'll tell you right off the bat that he won't. I like children very much, so I will be glad to meet the boy, he said so heartfelt that Sophia believed him. They didn't go any farther than the park today. They took a walk, then San walked her home. They agreed to meet tomorrow. 
You know, I probably won't be able to make it tomorrow, because it's a work week, she said. Well, what about after work, he asked. Well, yes, after work you can, but, she was silent again. But, he wanted to hear more. You understand, I'm still studying, and there's a lot to do. She decided not to hide anything from him. Studying is good, he answered her, I don't know anything, I'll wait for you tomorrow on the same bench at 7 in the evening near the entrance. They stood looking at each other, and then Sam took Sophia's hands, squeezed her palms, smiled and told her not to think about anything and not to be afraid of anything. She walked into her house, she wanted to sing, so much positivity was inside her. Sophia went straight to her room, she didn't come out of there again today. The next day she went to work again. Everything went fine there, and when she got home in the evening, she immediately started dressing up. She wanted to look good in front of her young man. Sam had also prepared for today. He decided to invite Sophia to a cafe, and when she came to the park, he told her right away. They went, had a very nice chat, just like yesterday. And today, as the guy walked her home, she realized that she had fallen in love. She fell in love for real, even if not at first sight, but still. Now every day they had meetings, she had time to do everything at work, then flew home, changed clothes, and went to her lover. Hi, they'd meet. I missed you so much. She kissed him and hugged him. You can't imagine how much I missed her, he looked at her and couldn't look at her. After a month of meetings, Sophia decided to talk to the young man seriously. Sam, I live at my friend's house, how would you like me to rent an apartment with you? She asked him about it, because she didn't have the finances to do it all alone. Positive, he didn't even think about it for a minute. Then I'm telling Leslie that as soon as you and I find the right one, I'm moving out. She asked. Of course, don't even think about it, he answered her confidently. That evening Sophia came home, her friends were gone, they rarely ever left the house together, but today there must have been some reason for their absence. Sophia decided that starting tomorrow, she would start looking for a place to move out of Leslie's place. Tonight, she wanted to wait for her friend to talk to her, but it was very late, and she went to bed. The next morning she went to work. There she called two addresses, these options she didn't like for some reason. After lunch, Sam called her and told her that he had found everything. Oh, that's good. She was glad. In the evening she was going to talk to her friend. She came home after work, and while Victor was out, Sophia decided to talk to Leslie. Now they were sitting in the kitchen, drinking tea. The landlady smiled and looked at her friend. Why are you looking at me like that? Sophia asked her. You know, I have a feeling that I missed you. You haven't been home lately, Leslie said. Thank you and Victor for everything. Sophia began to thank her. What kind of talk is that? I don't understand. Sam and I agreed that we would rent an apartment for two, Sophia admitted, although she didn't understand why she was so ashamed to do it. Are you sure about him? That it's your option? Leslie asked her directly because she didn't understand how it was possible. Of course I'm sure, you know how good he is, I love him very much, admitted her friend. You understand, he is a simple courier, he has nothing, no money, no housing, how will you live, and on what? Began to read moralizing friend. You know, let it be an ordinary courier, but it's only for now, looked at her Sophia and did not understand why her friend is so categorical. Oh, okay, do what you want, but then don't say I didn't warn you, sat Leslie and shook her head. Don't be like my mom, frowned Sophia. I just don't understand why you should throw yourself at the first person you meet when you can consider your options. They sat for a long time yet, talking about everything. Sophia wanted to go to her mother sooner to tell her what had happened to her lately. They called each other, but it felt awkward to tell her over the phone. A week passed and Sam and Sophia moved into their rented apartment. They were both working now. Everything was perfect in their relationship. She loved him very much, he loved her very much. They were walking down the streets, holding hands. Everything was great. Sam, will they let you off work for a few days? She asked the young man. What did you want? He was curious to know what she had in mind. I wanted to go to my mom and take you with me, to introduce you to her, to her son. She never hid anything from him. Okay, I think I can make the switch no problem, he wasn't against it at all. Victor, can I take a few days at my own expense? Sophia asked her friend and supervisor. Do you want to go to your son? He asked, his wife had already told him everything. Yes, she nodded. Okay, sure, take it, was not against the man. Then she wrote a statement and left work. 
The very next day, together with Sam, they were on their way to Sophia's mom's house. Unlike Steve, whom she had once taken to meet her mother for the first time, Sam was not worried. Sophia, on the other hand, was very excited. She hadn't seen the baby in so long. How would he accept her now? Hi, they entered the mother's apartment. Daughter. Cindy came out crying. Sophia purposely didn't call her. She wanted to surprise her. Where's Barry? The girl asked right away. At the daycare, the woman had already shifted her gaze to Sam. Hello, sorry, I got excited, she introduced herself. Sam, nice to meet you. He was happy to see her too. Now they had to go to the store to get something for the table. Sam offered to buy a present for Barry because they only had candy. What do you think of my mom? Sophie asked the young man. I don't know an ordinary woman. They went shopping, bought everything they wanted, and were now heading back to the apartment where Sophia lived. There she started making various salads something else. He was cutting bread, toasting it in the toaster. It was like one big machine. You have no idea how good it is with you, she told him. And me with you? He smiled. They hugged, laughed at each other, acted like children, until his mother appeared in the kitchen. Well, what are you doing here? She looked at the young people. I'm chopping salads, the daughter showed her her pot. And I help her with everything, smiled Sam. He really wanted the girl's mother to like him. It's good that you're doing all this, she smiled. After that, they all set the table together, and when it was time to go to daycare to pick up Barry, that's where they all went together too. Do you think he'll be okay with me? The daughter asked her mother. Honey, you've only been gone for a little while. I showed him pictures of you, told him all the time about you, told him not to miss you. I don't think he could forget you, the mother told her daughter. Today she had spent half a day looking at her new suitor, and she had nothing good to say about him, just as she had about the previous one. Just now she saw that her daughter was really good with him, so she stayed out of their relationship completely. Wait here, I'll go in, Sophia said, and went to the group where Barry was now. She peeked in there and looked for a long time, watching her son picking up toys with the rest of the kids. Barry, she called out to him. The boy looked back, a light seeming to flash in his eyes. He couldn't believe it was really his mother who had come for him. With all his legs he rushed to her, hugged her, pressed himself against her, and stood there for a long time. My little one, everything will be all right, his mom told him and pressed him against her, and he just put his arms around her neck and was ready to stand like that for as long as he wanted. After that, they walked out of the kindergarten building together and headed home. Everything was done here, all that was left was to sit down at the table and eat dinner. Mom decided that this time she would not interfere in her daughter's relationship at all. Well, tell me how you met, she asked the young people. And they began to tell each other how he drove roles, how he got into traffic and everything else. Well, wow, laughed the woman, how could you be so wrong? She looked at her daughter and at Sam. After that, Sophia saw that her sonny wanted to sleep. She apologized to everyone, took him in her arms and went to the room. On the one hand, the girl realized that she had left the boy to her mom to question. But on the other hand, she thought that now they would just talk. Sam, you know that Safi had already had a complicated relationship before you, right? The woman started talking to him. Yes, of course she told me, he kind of didn't feel like talking to Cindy. But at the same time, he could not answer her. What are you gonna do? She asked him. Do I have to do something? After a short silence, the young man asked Cindy. I don't know, I still want some kind of stability. You have no apartment, no money, and your job is weird, the woman told him. We'll be fine, he promised her. Okay, I believe you and I'm not getting involved in your relationship, just so that it doesn't turn out like... She stopped talking, because at that moment Sophia came into the room. What are you two talking about? She asked, realizing what was going on. Just wanted to lighten the mood. It's okay, Sam stood up and walked over to her. Well... Since everything is fine, we can go for a little walk, and then come back and go to bed. Right from the look of Sophia, it was obvious how happy she was. Well, it's time to pack up to go back, Sam said to her the next day. Yeah, so sorry to part, but she squatted down in front of Barry. Mom, he looked her in the face. I'll be coming for you very soon, she muttered to him. Now she and Sam drove back to the town where they had met. Sophia was still in touch with Leslie and she was still working at the same place she had been when they had met. The apartment they had rented, Sophia had quickly cleaned up. It was very cozy now. 
inexpensive but very pretty curtains hung on the windows. Here and there she had arranged some unusual statuettes. Everything was very beautiful and aesthetic. You're my hostess. Sam came up and kissed her. They didn't earn much, just enough for food and stuff. Sophia wanted to move the baby here as soon as possible, but they couldn't, because there were always obstacles. They were short of money, they couldn't get away from work, and many other factors. And the most important thing was that Sophia had a diploma defense in a month. She decided that until she received the document at graduation, she would not go anywhere. Don't worry, you'll be fine, you're a smart girl, Sam kissed her on the nose. Thank you for your support, she smiled at him. She felt jubilant inside just being around this man. Sophia arrived at the institute, she had everything ready, everything signed, approved by her professors. But she was still very nervous. And when it was all over, Sophia couldn't even believe that it had really happened to her. Of course when she came here not this color, she wished she had a diploma, but now it didn't matter anymore. What mattered was that she had it in her hands. I congratulate you my love. The young man picked her up in his arms and began to twirl her around. I congratulate myself, you know how. She pressed the document against herself and could not believe that it really happened to her. How many years had passed, she had never imagined that things could change so much in such a short time. Now they were back in their town, Sam at work, her too. They started talking about how sooner or later they have to move Barry here anyway. Yes, that will happen, but let's hold off a bit. The young man realized that he was telling her so now, and it might seem like he was against the girl's son, but that was absolutely not the case. There really wasn't enough money for anything. Where to go to work, where to get this money no one even imagined. Listen, let's take a risk. Sophia told him one day, they bought groceries at the store with the last money they had left before the salary. What are we going to do? He didn't understand. Let's buy a lottery ticket, she showed him the last two bills she had left in her purse. Are you sure? He asked her. Of course, she smiled. Without leaving the register, Sam asked the clerk for a couple lottery tickets, slipping them into his pocket. They went home. A week went by, a week went by, and the couple forgot about the tickets they had bought at the store. But Sophia did a big load of laundry over the weekend, and she got her hands on the very homemade tights Sam had worn to the store. She decided to check her pockets for anything and pulled out the tickets. Dan, look, we forgot. She brought them to him and showed them to him. Oh, really? He smiled and remembered how they bought them. Let's check it out. She sat down on the couch and opened her laptop. Yeah, let's was fine with him. When they typed in the number of the first ticket, there was no winnings. When they typed in the number of the second ticket, Sophia thought at first that something had happened to the computer. She refreshed, entered the number again, and again it was the same. Sophia, what is it? Sam shouted from the next room. I don't understand anything, but it's like our ticket won. She stared at the monitor with her mouth open. So what? What's the winnings? He was coming up to her. Look for yourself, she pointed her finger at the monitor. A hundred thousand dollars? They both looked at the screen and could not believe that this happened to them. Sophia immediately grabbed the phone and started calling her friend, telling her everything in detail. Sophia, you're so lucky, Leslie told her. I realized that myself, but it's just so weird that it's even possible. Neither Sam nor Sophia believed that all this was really happening to them. After that, they had to go back and forth, do the paperwork, get the winnings. But even when they had all that done and the money was in Sam's account, they still couldn't believe it was really happening to them. Can you imagine such a thing? The young man turned to her. Sam, what are you talking about? Of course I can't. My hand was just spinning right now. They were sitting at home one evening, talking. Have you thought about where we're going to spend this money? Sophie asked him. Not yet, he laughed. Why are you laughing? Sophia didn't understand him then. You see, when there was no money, and we did not have to think about where and what to spend it on, there were no such thoughts at all. And now we have it, and you think, and if we buy this, we won't have enough for this, and if we buy this, we won't have enough for that, he told her abstractly. And what do you want to buy? Sophia wondered, because everything was weird, like a movie. The first thing Sam said was that they should buy a house with land, that he had always dreamed of it, and now there was such an opportunity, it was a sin not to take advantage of it. Sophia was not against it, but she said not to consider any castles. Soon they had a small house, a place of their own, how can you believe it? Sophia spun around in the room. 
That's it. It's on you now, Sam said. Lately, when he had money, he had changed a lot. I agree. She was so happy. She stopped noticing everything. Now it was time to make the place as cozy as she wanted it to be. She started to renovate. Sophia was choosing wallpaper, flooring, choosing colors to make everything beautiful. She realized that she was doing it all for herself. She mainly paid attention to the children's room. Sophia realized that soon, soon she and her boy would be living here, all together. I've decided something else. Sam came home one day, they were sitting down to dinner, he was looking at Sophia. She always listened to him first, then gave advice or agreed. Decided that we should open some small business, we need to invest somewhere, Sam told his beloved. Sure okay, she wasn't against it at all. Here, look what I decided to do. You put a folder with some papers in front of her. When Sophia started to read it all, she realized that Sam wanted to open a cafe where he would sell coffee and fresh pastries to take away. But it would be okay to sit there. I like it, she looked into her favorite eyes. Sam started doing what he decided to do. He had help from specially trained people, he couldn't have done it on his own. Tanya, hi, Sophia came to visit a friend one day. Hello, how are you? She met her in the hallway. You know, I'm afraid to jinx it, but everything is so good that even scary. Sat in the kitchen, Sophia, Leslie put out various appetizers. The friends chatted for a long time, then Victor came home. He was also aware of what had happened in Sam and Sophia's life. Maybe you should quit then. Why do you need all this? He looked at her. No, why? I'm fine with it, I can keep up. She looked at him and shook her head. Okay, you decide the man did not enter into an argument with the girl. Now we will finish the repair, and immediately we are waiting for you to come to the housewarming party, Sophia said. And you do not want to invite us to the wedding. Leslie winked at her. Sure, but it'll just take a little while. Sophia nodded and smiled. She wouldn't mind marrying Sam herself. Here's to the wedding and then the housewarming party right away. Leslie didn't want to concede to her. They sat and talked some more. It was so heartwarming, so family-like. After that, Sophia went home. When she was there, she decided to talk to Sam about what she and her friend had just discussed. Are you proposing to me? He asked her then. Why not? She laughed. Good, then take the organizing and inviting the relatives into your hands and I'll take care of the rest, he said in a businesslike manner. Okay, she clapped her hands together. The next day, Sam came home with a huge bouquet of flowers and gave her a ring. Even though the couple had money now, Sophia didn't want any pomp. She chose a modest dress, they invited guests, rented a small restaurant. Everything's fine, she reassured herself in the morning. Great, showed her a friend who stood behind her back. Today her son and mom were by her side. Sophia actually thought Barry was going to stay here. Everything went very well. Everyone was happy. Both the newlyweds and their guests. They went home and today Barry slept on his new crib for the first time. Oh daughter, that's a lot of money that won't do you any good, the woman said. Mom, come on, it'll be okay, her daughter assured her. Okay, I promise to stay away from you, said the mother, and they hugged. Sophia did everything in the house as she had promised her husband while he took care of the cafe and everything else. Now that the renovation was almost done, they needed to find workers and already start preparing the opening. Now her son was near, her beloved husband was also here. What else could she dream of? The girl liked everything in her life. She had already forgotten when she dreamed about something. With Leslie continued to communicate, their husbands also got acquainted and now constantly together discussed some business issues. Sophia, hi, my husband came home alone. Hello, she came out to meet them. Meet Tony. This is Tony, he will be my companion. He introduced her companion, who was standing next to him. Nice to meet you, she said, realizing that her husband was becoming a real businessman. Today they were sitting in the kitchen, discussing various things, mostly talking about the cafe. We should buy a car to make it more convenient, Tony told Sam. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too. The husband looked at his wife. Decided done, Sam was on wheels now. He had almost completely stopped showing up at home, spending all his time with Tony together. Sophia was a little offended by this, but she realized that this was business, and you had to keep your eyes open. Darling, I invite you to the opening of our cafe, he told her one evening, when he returned late. I'm glad, and will definitely come falling asleep, replied Sophia. They prepared everything, invited friends, partners, everyone who wanted to come. 
The calf began to work, it was in a good location, so the traffic was large. The family started to make a profit. But everything does not pass without a trace with money came popularity, and also Sam's character began to change. Now he became arrogant, but he behaved like that only with others, and the family remained the same. Why did you answer him so rudely? Safi asked. Do not get involved in other people's business, she remembered this phrase for life. Why for her they were strangers after all, the cafe is common, she does not do a lot there too, but she didn't say anything to her husband, she just swallowed all those words. Barry went to kindergarten, Sophia continued to work. Why do you go there every day? If you want to earn some money, go to the cafe, there aren't enough hands, Sam told her. Please love, don't tell me about work, she asked him. And I don't understand why my wife has to work there, he shook his head. As long as it's not hard for me to do, I can do everything. She didn't know how to change his mind. Fine work if you want to, he went to his office. Every day Sam became more and more rude, Sophia noticed it, but again she kept silent because she realized that in his work, it should be so. Time passed, the business blossomed. Nothing changed in Sophia's life. Barry went to first grade. The wife began to notice that her husband had his eye on the money. The money they'd once won was long gone, but the cafe was working, it was profitable. I went to Tony's, Sam started going to his place almost every night. Why can't you stay home one night? Safi asked, bored with the whole thing. We have a common business, I need to consult with him, said as if the husband cut off. How I am tired of this common cause, Sophia was annoyed. In their family for a long time, or very rarely, words of love had been spoken. Sam and Sophia argued more and more often. And what will you live on if it doesn't happen? Her husband told her in response. That's it, go to your Tony. She turned away and went to her son. When first grade came to an end, Sophia decided to visit her mom for a week. Hi. She and Barry walked into the apartment. My dears have arrived, the woman hugged them. Sophia didn't want to tell her mom anything because she understood. Sometimes it's bad. Why would a woman think different things about her husband? Let her think they were doing well. Why don't you leave Sergi with me for the summer? Cindy asked. You know, I don't think anyone would mind that she leaned over to her son and kissed him. Her grandson missed his grandmother, so he agreed to stay too. Sophia was visiting her mom for a few days. After that she packed up and went home. She entered the house, her husband was sitting on a chair opposite the door and looked at one point. What's the matter with you? His wife came up to him. Where have you been? He asked instead of answering, what are you doing? At my mom's, she stared and didn't understand where the sound she knew years ago was. What if he wasn't? He looked up at her. Come on, how can a man change like that? Cried Sophia, because she realized that she did not want to live with such a man. Now you're accusing me of your party, he grinned. I'm not accusing you of anything. I never once gave you a reason to think that way about me. Tears kept pouring from my eyes. It's just I didn't notice. He tapped his fingers on his knee. Sam, please, let's talk like we used to. Her love hadn't gone anywhere. She was still the same but it was obvious that her husband was starting to grow cold to her. You know, I don't want to talk about anything yet. First of all, I'm not in the mood. And secondly, he stopped talking and looked up at her. You weren't like this when it happened. Money ruined you, she told him. This evening consisted entirely of arguments. He yelled at her, she yelled at him. It was a good thing Barry wasn't home. She realized to herself that her husband was changing before her eyes. In conversations, there was only one topic about money, about the companion, about business trips, and not a single word about the family. It was very painful and hurtful. I have to leave, he said to Sophia. Will you be gone long? She came up to him. I don't know, he turned away, put on his sneakers, left the apartment, and she stood and waited. Maybe he would kiss or hug her, say a kind word, but Sam did nothing of the sort. Sophia sat in the kitchen. She picked up her phone, dialed Leslie's number. Hey, buddy, what's up? She answered right away. Tanya, can you come to me? You know, I feel so bad, Safi asked her. Of course, now I will. Never refuse Leslie if someone needed help, and a friend and even more so. And indeed, in a couple of hours, she was in the kitchen at Safia's house. The hostess had already set the table. They sat down, started drinking tea and eating some sweets. But at some point, Sophia couldn't stand it and started crying. What's wrong with you? Leslie didn't understand. 
I can't live like this anymore. Sam had changed so much. If before he was a perfect man, he loved me. I loved him, he accepted my son, communicated with my mother. Now he's a completely different person. You should see how money has changed him, the girl sobbed. Well, wait, maybe everything will settle down, give him time to come to his senses, Leslie tried to cheer up her friend. When will it happen? How much time has already passed? Why then I did not lose my head from this big and crazy money, said Sophia to her friend as if she was guilty of something. Well, we are women, we are strong, and everything can think ahead, did not know what words to find Leslie, so that Sophia did not think a lot of things about herself. You know, the frustrating thing is, he thinks it's all his. Yes, perhaps we acquired it all before marriage. He put it in his name, but I never even thought that this man could change, and everything will go wrong. Leslie saw that Sophia is already getting hysterical. Why do you immediately think about the bad? You need to think about the good first, and then everything else. Her friend took her hand. You know, I see what he's like. He can raise his voice at me. He doesn't pay attention. And the last time in general when I came from my mom, told me that I was walking somewhere, and I realized that I'm not alone. Sophia sat, curled her fingers, and told everything to her friend. They sat for a while longer. The girl got ready to go home. It was about midnight. Okay, bye. Leslie hugged her at the door. Can I call you again sometime? Sophia asked her. Sure, why do you ask? I'm always here for you. I'll always be there for you. She brushed away a strand of hair that had fallen into her friend's face, opened the door, and headed for the car. Sophia at this point cleaned up everything in the kitchen, went to her room. She waited for Sam, but he was still gone. She tried to call him a couple times, but the phone was unavailable. Inside there was a kind of excitement, in the soul everything was clamoring. Despite the time, she decided to call her mom and tell her everything. Imagine, she told her about what was going on in the family. You were so principled, her mother told her. I don't know what to do. There is something going on inside me now, as if something is going to happen, Sophia said. Her mother listened. She tried to support her daughter, but she didn't know what to do. Come on, go to bed. Don't think about anything else. Go to the kitchen, drink some soothing tea, then lie down, count to ten, close your eyes, and everything will be fine, Cindy told her. Sophia did just that, and as she lay on the bed, she could do nothing but think of Sam. As she was just about to start falling asleep, she heard her phone vibrate. She fumbled for it near the pillow, pressed the green button, and brought it to her ear. Hello, hello, can you hear me? It sounded there. Yes, answered Sophia in a sleepy voice. I am obliged to inform you that your husband was in a car accident. Now he is on a referral to the hospital, and if you want to see him, you need to go there, he dictated her address. The dream was gone. Sophia immediately jumped out of bed. She looked at herself in the mirror and saw dark bags under her eyes, but there was no time to change anything. She quickly dressed and rushed to where her beloved husband was. She was stopped at the hospital. They said that at the moment Sam was in intensive care and there was no way to get to him. Sophia just sat in the hallway. She cried and thought about all the things she would do to get her husband back on his feet. She had been here all day today. It wasn't until nighttime that she went home to cook something to eat and at least get a couple hours of sleep. She called work, said she wasn't coming in. The next day, and the rest of the time, Sophia was constantly by her husband's side. Beloved, she stroked his head. Although several surgeries had already been done, Sam wasn't getting any better. He was conscious, opening his eyes mooning something, and that's all he did. Sophia, hi, how are you doing? Her mother called her constantly. Mommy, everything is fine, I'll be there soon. She promised the woman every time, but every time she failed. Don't worry, I'll babysit Barry. The main thing is that you're okay. No matter how the wound had felt about Sam, she was still worried about him. Thank you, Sophia couldn't stop thanking her. It was Tony alone who was doing everything in the cafe now. Sophia didn't have time for anything, she spent all her time with Sam. He was very badly injured. He couldn't walk, he couldn't talk, he could move his arms, but very slowly. His wife did everything for him. At this point her love seemed to grow even stronger. She did everything for him. Do you need any help? Tony called her often. No thanks, she asked what she really needed help, she just didn't want to bother the man. Sophia, don't be shy if you need to call me, I'm always here for you, her husband's friend and companion told her. Of course, of course, she promised him. So passed day after day, 
At some point Sophia thought that her mother should be moved here, in the house, so that she and her son would be close to each other. But again and everything somehow did not work out. And the school day went on, it turned out that Barry was just skipping school. Hi honey, Sophia came into the room every day and smiled at her husband. Naturally, he couldn't answer her, because he just lay there and watched, and she did not pay attention to it, just came up, stroked his head, smiled, opened all the boxes, and began to feed. Sophia only cried when she was alone. She saw that Sam was getting worse and worse every day. The doctors had their hands full. They didn't know what to do. Tony, can you come over? Sophia called him. She was crying into the phone. Sure, now, where are you? He answered her. Now in the hospital, but I'm going home. Sophia's voice was so depressed that the man realized that she was very upset. Half an hour later, he was already in the hospital building. He walked up to the ward. A woman was sitting beside it. What happened? He sat down next to her. You know, he doesn't do anything anymore. He used to blink when I asked him, but now he just stares and does nothing. She sobbed and wiped away her tears. Shall I come in? He pointed to the room. Of course she was, she didn't mind. Now the girl sat and thought how tired she was. Her arms were drooping, but it was necessary to continue caring for her husband. When Tony came out of the ward, you could see by his look that he was dejected. He walked over to his friend's wife, took her hand, and led her to the end of the hallway, toward the exit. Where are we going? She looked at him. Let's go, I'll take you home, you need to rest, get cleaned up, and get some sleep. They walked out into the yard, Tony put her in the car, bringing her home. Will you stay? She asked him, I can't be alone right now. Sure, they went up to the apartment. Sophia went straight to her room and lay down on the couch, and Tony went to the kitchen, found a sedative, diluted it in a glass, and carried it to Sophia. They had to go to the hospital again in a couple hours. I can only drive you. The man looked at her. Okay, I'll manage on my own there. I'm not used to it, she answered him. When they pulled up, Sophia got out of the car, walking down the familiar path already. The doctor met her in the hallway. Are you okay? He asked her. Yes, there's something wrong. Sophia was worried. Of course, I don't want to talk about it, but I think that your husband will not live till the morning. Sophia's eyes showed confusion. She didn't understand how this could have happened. Until a while ago, they had a good family, everything was normal, and the money they won did not bring them any happiness. But what the doctor told her now, she took it normally, because she had been preparing herself for this news for a long time. When Sophia entered the room, Sam was lying with his eyes closed. It seemed like he was just sleeping. She didn't disturb him, sat down on a chair nearby, picked up a book, and began to read aloud. When she had already read a couple of pages, she noticed that Sam was lying down, not showing any signs of life. Sophia became afraid, she went out into the corridor and called the nurse. When the two of them entered the room, the nurse looked at her and pressed her hands to her mouth. All that was left was to double check. Yes indeed, Stan was gone. Sophia herself doesn't know why she had no emotion at that moment. Perhaps she was already so tired that she couldn't cry or laugh. She just went to the window, turned away, looked out, and thought about how they had everything, and that damn lottery ticket ruined everything. Hello, Tony. She dialed his number. Yes, Sophia, I'm listening, he answered immediately. Sam is no longer with us, she told him. Jesus, what a nightmare. Pack up, go home, I'll be at your place in a couple of hours, he answered her. Sophia talked to the doctor, went downstairs, called a car, got in it, and drove home. There was still a lot to do, to call the funeral service, to order everything, to buy the necessary things, and to notify all the relatives, friends, who knew her husband. It was all kind of automatic. While Sam was at the morgue, at home she covered all the mirrors with sheets. She needed someone to talk to, but there was no one around. It had been over two hours, but Tony still hadn't arrived. He called, saying he had some business to attend to. Sophia was alone. She sat in the kitchen for a long time, wondering how and what would happen next. She had a big house, a cafe to look after, everything to buy and so on. Tony, though a partner, she and her husband owned most of it, so they were in charge. The next day she woke up in the morning, drove to the hospital, found out how and what, picked up Sam's things, brought them home. She was looking through everything in the container and saw a cell phone. When she tried to open it, she realized it was password protected. She had to find where the password was written down. 
She started looking for letters, numbers, realizing that Sam couldn't have entered anything complicated. First, it was his date of birth, then her son's date of birth. Lastly, she decided to enter her birthday, but it was all wrong. Sophia sat staring out the window, thinking. Then for luck, she typed in their wedding date, and when she pressed up, the screen was unlocked. Sophia herself didn't know what she wanted to find there, she was just curious, maybe some important records or something. She went into the gallery and saw that there was a recorded video that was taken a few days before the accident. Sophia jabbed her finger at it, and her dead husband's face appeared on the screen. Hi everyone. He waved his hand. I don't know, but it's like I got the urge to record this video today. It may seem like prejudice to some, but if nothing happens, I'll just delete it and that's it. You could see him squirming in front of the mirror. It's like you knew something was going to happen, Sophia sighed. So, I'll continue. Sophia, when we met, I loved you, I did everything for you. I still love you, and I'm leaving you money in your account. Of course it's not much, but I think you'll have enough for the first time, and then you'll do something on your own. I'll bequeath my house, cafe and everything related to it to my partner Tony. He said, smile at the camera, sent the kiss, and disconnected. What? Sophia stared at the phone and couldn't tell if this was really happening or if she was confused. She was now dialing the number of the lawyer Sam was working with to check with him. Yes, Sam had written a will and all his assets had gone to Tony, he confirmed. That couldn't be. Yes, Sophia wasn't greedy, but simply she realized that they'd raised this house together, they'd done business together, and now that he was gone, he'd handed everything over to a friend. How could that be possible? He had a son, at least he left something to him. Sophia dialed Nikita's number, her voice trembled, but now not from pity or something else, but just from injustice. Hello, he answered Sophia, I'm sorry I couldn't come to you yesterday. No, it's okay, tell me, did you know that Sam was putting everything on you? Sophia asked him. He told me something about it, that lately you started fighting a lot, that he does everything for business and you sit at home, doing nothing. Tony started to tell her. I'm sitting at home? She was surprised at this turn of events. Sophia, I'm sorry, I had nothing to do with it, he replied, and hung up. No, you'll listen to me till the end. She dialed him again. Well, what else? You could hear from his tone that he was a little annoyed. I'm packing, the house is yours, and we're going to my mom's. I hope you won't mind if we come back later and take the rest, and you can bury your friend and partner yourself, she said, loudly, and pressed the disconnect button then threw the phone on the couch. At first, she wanted to get hysterical, to cry, to shout something else, but then she changed her mind. She took some of her son's things, her own, her documents, and went to the train station. Now she wanted only one thing, to see her mother, her son, to embrace them, and never to leave them again. Daughter, what are you doing here? Cindy didn't understand her. Mom, you don't know what he did. He threw himself on her neck, the bastard. I told you this would happen. That's it, let his partners bury him, I won't even show up at the funeral. She sobbed into her mom's shoulder. Okay daughter, that's it, we'll see, you'll calm down, it'll be okay. The woman stroked her head. After that, they got buried into a school in the same town where Sophia's mom lived. She started looking for a job too, because she didn't want to go back to the town where she and Sam lived. It was hard, but she got settled. Now they were all living in her parents' apartment. Her son was studying, she was working, and her mom was helping her with everything, just like she promised. Sophia didn't go to the funeral or anywhere else. She kept thinking how a man who told her he loved her more than anyone else in the world, promised her golden mountains, could do such a thing. Okay, with her, she is nobody to him, but why he left nothing to his son, given that all the property, even though it was written down on him, and bought before marriage, but they all raised and made together. Several years passed. Sophia has already come to terms with the situation. She did not regret anything. Everything was fine in her life. Only one thing remained unchanged. She no longer trusted men and did not want to get acquainted or meet anyone, no matter how many times her friend Leslie called her and invited her to visit. She never once responded positively. One weekend, she and Barry decided to go to a cafe. They're sitting there, talking. Suddenly, Sophia's phone rang. She saw Tony's name on the screen. Sophia curled her lips, she didn't want to answer it, but he was so insistent that she had to answer it. What do you need? She asked him without greeting. Sophia, we need to meet and talk, 
he couldn't come and announce because he knew she wouldn't let him in anyway. Okay, do you know where my parents live? She wondered what this man wanted from her after all this time. Yes, of course I do, he replied. Well, that's where you should come, she hung up the phone. And what, mom, are you going to talk to him after all that happened between you and him? Barry wondered. He had listened to grandma and mom talk and was roughly aware of everything that was going on. Why not talk? It didn't matter anymore now she didn't bother to explain anything. The next day, about the same time, Tony was already in the city. They agreed to meet in the same cafe, where they were yesterday with his son. And now they were sitting at the table, looking at each other. You haven't changed at all, you're still as beautiful as ever, he told her. Well, you too, she physically felt that she didn't want to talk to him. Can we order something? Tony looked at the waiter. There was only coffee in front of them now. Say what you want, I don't have much time, she was rubbing her napkin and didn't want to talk to him at all. Sophia, I know you found a video on Sam's phone of him saying he's leaving everything to me. Well, you should know there's another video, and he put the flash drive on the table. What's the video? She's curious. Well, if you want, we can watch it together, Tony smiled. To do that we need to go home at least, because there is no equipment. The girl looked at the flash drive, and realized that this little thing has all the evidence. I'll get it, I have a laptop in the car. The man got up from the table and went outside. As they plugged in the flash drive, Sam appeared on the screen again. Hello everyone, like the first video, Tony waved his hand, I hope you got my video where I say that I'm leaving all my possessions to you. So this is part two. If that one's on your phone that anyone can find, this one I'm sending you in person. Lately, as business picked up and life got better, Sophia's been kind of cold to me. She's been staying late at work, going to her mom's, doing other things. So I want to check up on her. I'm really leaving you all my possessions, the house, the cafe, the land. First of all, I know that you will only increase my capital, and secondly after that, if Sophia really did not do anything like that, and when something happens to me, she will not find another, and will not lose everything. What? Sophia turned and looked at Tony. I couldn't believe it when I got that video. First of all, because Sam's a young guy, what could have happened to him that made him write those videos? And secondly, I never suspected you of doing anything shameful, Tony frowned. So it turns out, Sophia didn't finish, she cried. Realizing that she hadn't buried her husband, left, left everything behind, hadn't figured it out. And how would she figure it out if the flash drive came later? So what do we do now? She looked at Tony. I can't answer that question. I only know one thing that soon we will go with you to the notary and I will present it all to you," he answered. Everything was strange now. It turned out that Tony himself did not know what he had to do. But now he realized that Sophia really did nothing. She lived alone, and how could Sam think of his wife, who had always been there for him like that? I'm sorry, the girl blushed, she lowered her eyes. I'm sorry, I've been working all this time, the cafe is going uphill, I decided to open a restaurant. I share the money as before. They are all on deposit, so don't feel bad, you and Barry are not poor, he smiled. Why such a man and alone? She didn't know why she asked that herself. I can't tell you that, now it was Tony's turn to blush. Okay, Sophia didn't insist. She felt differently about this man now. Will you be back? He looked at her. I guess I need to talk to my mom, she didn't hide anything from him. Sophia, he took her hand. What? She looked up at him. Can I come to your place or come over? He looked into her eyes. Tony, wouldn't that be considered a betrayal? She realized that she felt good with this man around. I think not. You was my best friend, your favorite husband. He did not finish. It was clear. Okay, I'll be there soon. I need to settle things here and then we'll see. Sophia smiled. She returned home. Her mood was very good. You're glowing. What's wrong? Cindy asked her. Mom? It turns out it's not what I thought it would be, she sat down on a chair and told me everything. What do you think you're going to do now? The woman was very surprised. I don't know, I'll go back and see what's going on with the house, I think I'll leave Tony in charge of the business, she began to list. Oh, Sophia, I don't recognize you, so quiet, modest, and the grip, God willing, showed her mother a clenched fist. The next day she went to the Enterprise, where she now worked, wrote a letter of resignation, she had to work it off, but then she was free. Barry sat down across from him, his mother. Yes, 
I'm listening to you, and I even know what you're going to say. The boy looked at her. How will you react to this? I promise, three months, and most six months, and I will come for you and grandmother, and we will go to live in our house together, said Sophia, and she herself believed in her words. She packed her things as she wished and was escorted out. On the road, the first thing she did was to call Leslie, with whom she had kept in touch until then. Sophia told her everything, her friend was only happy for her. She invited her to visit. Tony met her at the train station, they immediately went to the house, where Sophia did everything with her own hands. When she walked in there, memories immediately came over her. Is it hard? Tommy came up to her and put his arm around her shoulders. A little she nodded her head, but didn't move away. After that, the paperwork began. Sophia felt strange, she couldn't understand why Stan had made everything so complicated, did he really not trust her that much? When she shared her thoughts with Tony, he assumed that her friend had been recording all those videos and doing the paperwork, not thinking that anything would happen to him. Come over for dinner tonight, Sophia invited him over when everything was ready, house and all, was back in her possession. Gladly, he answered her. While she was home alone, she dialed her friend's number and invited her and her husband over to introduce Tony. It felt really good on her soul. Sophia couldn't believe that her life was starting to get better again. Tony arrived first, a large bouquet of tea roses in his hands. Is that for me? She looked at him, her cheeks flaming. Sophia, you asked me the other day why I was alone, because as soon as I saw you, I thought there was no one else in the world, so I stayed alone, and now, he stopped talking and lowered his gaze. Tony, she walked over to him. Could we try it? The guest said quietly. Can we? She blushed like a girl again. That evening they had a good meal. The next day it was decided to go after Cindy and Barry. Now everyone was living together, it was peaceful and nice. Victor again offered Sophia to come out to work for him. Thanks for the offer, but I'd rather help at the cafe, she answered him. Tony was doing a good job. By now, they were already living together with Sophia. Barry accepted the man, although not as a father, but very respectful of him, because he loved his mother. Will you marry me? Two years later, Tony proposed to Sophia. Of course, she went over and snuggled up to him. Sophia now realized that Sam had met this man for a reason. God must have wanted him to have someone who would stay with her and take care of her. Daughter, congratulations. Cindy came up to them and gave them a hug. For the first time, she liked her daughter's choice. The wedding was modest, it was still the same company, celebrated in a restaurant. After that, Sophia helped her husband with everything as before. Barry grew up, he too contributed to work and family. Have you thought about where you're going to go? Tony asked him. Yeah, I want to be an engineer, he replied. Good choice. The man shook his hand. Everyone who knew this family saw how decent and honest they were. Tony loved Sophia so much he couldn't put it into words. He thanked and apologized to his friend every day. Mom, are you home? Barry came home from school one day. Yeah, what's up? The kid's already finished his third year. Meet Sarah, this is Sarah. Sophia saw a girl standing next to her son. Hello, the woman approached her and hugged her. Good afternoon, the woman replied modestly. Come in, the mother called them to the table. Mom, I have news Sarah and I have been together for six months, and I have decided to propose to her, looked at Sophia and Cindy. That's great news, it means there will be another person in our family, everyone rejoiced. When Tony found out this evening, he decided to throw a big party. Barry was grateful to him. On the day of her son's wedding, Sophia asked her husband to take her to the cemetery. She came to her husband's grave, stood silent for a long time, and then she couldn't stand it and cried. Thank you, my darling, that everything turned out this way. I believe it was you who sent me all this. And no matter what kind of relationship we had, I still know that you love me as much as I love you. Sophia sat down and stroked the monument. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Subscribe to the channel. Like it, write comments if you like the story. And see you on the channel.